Madam Speaker, with your leave, I rise now to second um, the motion put forward by my honorable colleague and my, as apparently my twin today. <laughs> and I promise this was, I promise this was not um, planned that we speak on the same bill while dressing in similar suits. <laughs> <laughs> but, Madam Speaker, I do wish to support the bill presented here today by our member for number one, which is the Rastafari Rights and Recognition Bill 2023. And I want to say that this bill is a significant bill to our society. And Madam Speaker, if you would allow me to tell you how proud I am to stand here today in support of this bill. And I'm proud for us as a country. I am proud because as a country, this bill represents us stepping up to the plate and doing something that should have been done a long, long time ago. Madam Speaker, this bill represents maturity it represents consciousness. It represents a belief in the fact that we are all equal. And by no means, no any sector of our society should face discrimination. And Madam Speaker, everyone has legislated in our constitution, enshrined in the constitution. Everyone has a right to freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, freedom of religion. And for too long, Rastafarian community has not been afforded that right. For far too long, they have not been afforded that right. And this bill today, helps to move that vein all in the right direction. See, Madam Speaker, I'm sure that you would have had experience yourself with understanding the plight of the Rastafarian. They couldn't get certain jobs just for them practicing their religious right to grow their natural hair in its most natural state. Children couldn't go to school because they wanted to practice their religion. Madam Speaker, here today, we are making a conscious effort to put into our legislation and clearly state in the passage of this bill that Rastafarians are as equal as any one of us here in this country. And that is big. That is huge. Because at the end of the day, when we look at our people and we look at what they have faced all the years, to be able to stand with them in the House of Parliament, I never thought I would see this day. I never thought I would see this day. And I'm happy to be a part of it. Because all of us know somebody from the community. And we cannot. Yes, I, I, I was told to see that one is right here. <laughs> but we cannot, Madam Speaker, divorce also the fact that the Rastafarian community has contributed significantly to the development of the country and the region. Madam Speaker, I personally, I respect Rasta liberty. I respect their practice of veganism. 
I respect the way they fully embrace and express their naturalness. I, Madam Speaker, am sure that I'm not the only one that appreciates and loves reggae music. Again, expression of the Rasta community. And Madam Speaker, it's also important to recognize the cultural and religious significance of cannabis in the Rasta community. The use of cannabis is deeply rooted in their religious practices, Madam Speaker. And for them, it's seen as a tool for meditation and connecting with their creator. And for too long, they have been prosecuted for that. Police kicking in their doors, even when they're in their own privacy. And today, we stand here to help put into our lives that that day has come to an end. They are as equal as any one of us. And I am proud to be here to do that. Madam Speaker, that makes me want to sing a Peter Dash. <laughs> but I'll save that for another time. <laughs> Madam Speaker, <laughs> in 2019, the High Court recognized the constitutional right of Rastafarians to possess and cultivate cannabis for personal and religious use. And the decision highlighted the need for the state to acknowledge and respect these rights. And this bill is here to do just that. Equal rights and justice. I should start to sing now. <laughs> 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 the bill provides a framework, Madam Speaker, for the recognition of Rastafari groups, allowing them to exercise their rights related to the use of cannabis. Registered groups will be eligible for waivers of various cannabis licensing fees. So here we are talking about them now being a part of our economics. When we thought we'd have ever heard it there, when they are invited to participate in wider society as normal as anybody else. Exemption for business license fees. Madam Speaker, tax concessions, Madam Speaker, concessionary rate for lease or purchase of crown lands, Madam Speaker, equal rights and justice. Today is a good day. And today, I stand proudly with my colleagues to legislate these incentives. And these incentives will help in burning down any and every system of oppression and empower registered rats to fire groups to establish their gatherings, to establish businesses, to develop their lives freely and contribute to the economic development of our nation. Madam Speaker, equal rights and justice but it's also important to note, Madam Speaker, that while this bill recognizes the rights of Rastafarians, it also upholds our international obligations regarding the regulations of cannabis. For you see, St. Kitts and Nevis is a party to the 1961 Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs, which requires us to limit the production and distribution and use of cannabis for medical and scientific purposes. And by enacting this bill, Madam Speaker, we are striking a balance between respecting the Rastafari community and complying with our international obligations. Equal rights, justice. And so, Madam Speaker, I don't wish to take up all the time because we have a long legislative agenda today. But as I conclude, I wish to say that this bill, 
the Rastafari Rights and Recognition Bill 2023 is a significant step forward in recognizing the rights of Rastafarians and providing a legal framework for the use of cannabis. It is also an opportunity for us to uphold the principles of religious freedom, promote economic development, and fulfill our international obligations. And I urge all members of this honorable house to support this bill and pave the way forward for a more inclusive, progressive, transparent, and mature society. May it please you, Madam Speaker.